grandfather who was a World War II veteran, when he passed away, I was overcome with the need or desire to build an heirloom piece for his flag that can stay in my my family for a long time. So when I got home, I got right to it. In the description below, I'll link the two resources I use. Uh, both of them have YouTube videos, both of them have blog write-ups, and I will link them below. Uh, one is a good friend of mine, Aaron Massey, Mr. Fixit DIY, and the other is the company uh, Infinity Cutting Tools. The biggest thing you want to make sure you're paying attention to is the dimensions uh, for all the pieces and the angles in which to cut. So what you're seeing here is the vertical tenoning jig. Uh, that is cutting four of the six miters that you'll use on this project. And then the miter saw was used to cut the two 45 degree uh, cuts that are at the top. I don't prefer, nor do I recommend the miter saw for this, uh, but at the time and place, that's simply what I elected to go with. And I, I did get pretty lucky here that it was accurate. Uh, if I had to do it again, I'd definitely do it at the table saw, just tilting the uh, tilting the blade with an angle finder. If at any point throughout this build you find that there's something I left out that you wish you knew, uh, feel free to reach out in the comments below. I will be checking and responding um, to you, so uh, feel free to do that. Right now I'm using the dado stack to cut the recess for the glass piece that's going to be inserted. Make a couple of clean passes at this on all three and then I'll move the uh, fence over and I will cut the recess that will receive the backing uh, a little bit later. This is another one of those times where I went against the plans and opted for my own uh, idea, and it worked out just fine, but it's not necessarily the best way to go. What I did, and you'll see me with the router here in just a moment, was that I cut the recess uh, for the backing. I drilled a hole for the bottom, and then I used a flush trim bit to remove all of the material to create a slot. In that way, sort of like a drawer bottom, I could slide the backing into place and then I drilled a hole and uh, could screw that in from behind. It was a cleaner look overall, I just don't know that it was worthwhile. You can be the judge. Here I went ahead and sanded and applied finish on the inside of the case before it glue up. This just makes it easier and gives you a more consistent finish. Uh, and unfortunately I did not record or find footage or delete. I'm not sure what happened. 
uh, but I don't have footage of the glue up itself. What I can tell you is that when I glue up the face frame, I used a very similar process here. Uh, applying, instead of wood glue, I used epoxy to give myself a little bit more open time. And I used a combination of a band clamp as well as a handful of the spring miter clamps. This is the recess that we cut out to receive the glass. This is a silicone that goes on white and dries clear, and I selected this obviously just because of the use of the glass, and it worked really well. I'm using the CA glue painter's tape method here to try and add a few areas of additional clamping pressure that I can get the face frame uh, into place. This failed miserably, but thankfully everything worked out uh, anyways, but I had to show it. While none of the other plans called for it, I did want to add a base to this project, and I did that really quite simply. Uh, I used an additional piece that I had milled up in the original milling process, made a quick jig that you'll see here in just a moment, and just kind of lined it up and added a little chamfer to match the angle. Really simple uh, additional piece here to the project, but I think it really helped to the overall uh, look of the piece. Unfortunately, the lining up of the holes here drilled in the jig and putting them on both the base and the bottom of the case, that was another failed footage attempt, but uh, pretty straightforward operation. I think you can figure it out. All right, now that the case is all dried up, it's time to turn the attention to the miter splines. And this was nerve wracking. For one, I've got the glass in there now, and so I didn't want to cut it too deep. That was nowhere near as nerve-wracking as just this being an operation that I never attempted before. All that said, go slow. Again, double-check your angles, making sure you're referencing that tenoning jig, and good luck. So there's a couple of reasons that I chose brass as the accent on this. First and foremost, I love the combination of brass and walnut. Um, and secondly, brass is a soft enough metal just like aluminum where you don't need to invest in any additional or metal cutting blades in order to work with it. Uh, your woodworking tools will cut it just fine. Um, and so that's an, a really nice benefit.
To get the splines into place, I again use two to one epoxy here with a pigment that I use regularly when working with walnut. It can be a little bit darker than walnut in its natural state, but once you apply something like a poly, uh, the colors really work well together and um, it just seems to be a nice combination, at least to my eye. So I'll link those below if you have an interest in that. Okay, last bit of failed coverage. I didn't record sanding down the brass splines. Uh, here's what I'll tell you. I hit it with the random orbit sander with a coarse grit and then high grit hand sanded it and finished it with Brasso. The other thing I'll tell you is that you should find somebody smarter than me to rely on for how to treat brass because this came out okay. It wasn't great, um, but the smartest advice I can give you is to find somebody smarter than me, which should be fairly easy. So I hope you enjoyed watching this. I know I enjoyed building it. If you want to continue to support my page, please go ahead and subscribe. Hit the notification bell, and that will keep you up to date every time I upload a new video. Thanks for checking out my channel, and have an awesome day.